love about this, and I'm not going to go into the platitudes of doing any mihis to anybody because they've been said by better people than I uh, so far, Mr Speaker. And Mr Jones should be quiet. You know, do himself a favour and be quiet. In fact, do the nation a favour and be quiet. Mr Speaker, on a day where New Zealand signed up to the UN Declaration on Indigenous People, we also sign up, we, hear, we are here, sir, at the second reading of something that is great, something that should unify this nation, something that's never been tried before, as Rodney Hyde uh, so aptly put it, that has never been put uh, to the nation before, co-governance. And why not, sir? And I could pick holes through everything that Rodney Hyde said, even though that this parliament at two o'clock every afternoon comes into this house and does its prayer. And we don't call it hocus pocus. We don't call it hocus pocus. We stand in, in respect and we stand, sir, with a bit of reverence. But I know it's different for Rodney because when Maoris do it, it's hocus pocus, sir. When Scottish people, sir, revere the Loch and the Loch Ness monster, that's called that's called greatness. That's called tourism. But when Maoris do it, sir, it's called hocus pocus. Well, I got news for the magician, Mr. Rodney Hyde. If he's so ashamed of this government for doing something like this, for being able to see actually the future of this nation then he knows what he can do. And that's give up, give up some of his goodies if he doesn't like it. But I know, sir, that that won't happen. That won't happen, sir. We heard a speech from the pulpit about democracy, about elected officials and non-elected officials. But this was the, the minister who got rid of ECANs. Not saying that we didn't agree with that, because actually that actually had to happen. But for him to get up in this House and pontificate about democracy and be the minister that actually sacked some democratically elected people is a bit over the top, sir. I want to, sir, uh, while I've got the time, because I, my whips uh, uh, have told me that I've only got a, a short, um, short time, sir, and that is to talk about the restoration and the protection of the river. Because at, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. If we don't protect, if we don't preserve the river, then we are doing ourselves and doing Tony an injustice. And that is, sir, we don't look after them. We don't protect and we don't preserve Tony. Sir, I've heard it on, on many occasions uh, said, sir, that uh, 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 the river is, is, is more than just a waterway to Tony. Sir, I, I, I think it is time for this country to believe in such things uh, as uh, uh, the, the intrinsic nature, the, the link between a people uh, and its waterway, sir. And like I said earlier, we do it, we, we, we acknowledge it overseas. It's about time we acknowledged it uh, here, sir. The four things that this bill does, sir, is set out a vision and strategy. It establishes the Waikato River Authority, sir. It does instigate, for the first time in this country, a co-management regime. And the last thing it does, sir, well, the fourth thing uh, that it does, sir, it, it is that it, it establishes a contestable fund, a clean-up fund, which I, sir, um, am, am over the moon about. And Because what that does is that it doesn't uh, 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 give to one group uh, the responsibility of doing all the cleaning up. If people out there in our community want to, to put an application in or put a, uh, a, a project up, sir, they can and there is a contestable fund uh, to help them do that. So lastly, I, I, um, I would be remiss to say to um, Rodney Hyde that I stand and support this bill not because of my relationship with my brother-in-law. 
Um, I, I stand here because it's actually a good thing to do. And regardless of whether the brother-in-law was, was uh, one of the co-negotiators or not, I'd still be standing here supporting uh, the legislation. So I think it is uh, a, bit, uh, um, a bit far from the mark for uh, the Honourable Rodney Hyde to say that the only reason I'm standing here is because my brother-in-law um, told me to do so, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, sir, I think what we do is, is, uh, today is, is a uh, watershed moment in New Zealand's history, just as I think that uh, it was when the House passed uh, Te Aho Matua, um, 19, I think 98-99. So that was a watershed in terms of a people's belief and a people's uh, belief system uh, being passed by, uh, in legislation. And I, and I consider this to be on the same, same path. I don't see this as being a, a treaty settlement per se. I, I see this as a, a far-reaching uh, look into what this country could mean if we only work at it. There are, you know, there are opponents to this bill, and they are entitled to be opposed uh, to it for whatever reasons they have. But my, uh, my, my message to everybody, sir, is this, that if we really truly want to be a united and unified nation, then it's time we started taking bits and pieces of each other rather than uh, doing what Mr Hyde uh, would want us to do, sir. I, I uh, look forward to the debates uh, in, the, uh, in the committee stages and certainly look forward uh, to the brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles arriving here uh, on the third reading because I think it is. And, and without wanting to uh, disrespect other treaty settlements, including the, the initial uh, uh, treaty settlement in, in Tony, I actually think this is more of a watershed than most people think. Uh, Honourable Mary Ann Street. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kia koe, Lady Raiha. Kia pai to 